to uplift our offering uh, just now, and as we do that, let's continue to worship the Lord. We'll remain seated and we'll sing Majesty, Worship His Majesty. Almighty God, we just worship you for who you are. You are Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And when we think of Jesus, the eternal Son of God, we think of him as the the one involved in the creation of this world, uh, the one who enjoyed the gaze of angels in the glory of heaven. And marvel of marvels, we have been singing of how the Son of God did not count equality with God something to be held onto, but he came into this world, humbling himself, becoming a servant, and becoming obedient to death, even the death upon a cross. How shameful, and yet he did that for us, that we might be forgiven, that we might know peace with you and be able to call you our Father. 
Lord, we thank you for these wonderful things that we've been able to be excited about in our song this morning. And we come before you and pray that today, in this place, in this hour together, as we lift up our voices and our hearts in praise, and as we hear your word, that you would be with us by your Spirit. And the things that we speak of and sing of, that, Lord, you would just open up our hearts to receive them as the very truth of God, and that they would change our lives. And so we are before you today, Lord, with all our different needs, our different circumstances, and we just invite you to come and to bless us and to make us the people that you want us to be. So continue, Lord, in our worship, we ask. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. I don't know, you can see this here. This is the power of prayer. Shan, you know these songs. Do you want to come and join us? So Shan used to do all these songs himself, and so it's so wonderful to have all these children here now. Um, It'd be really good. So please enjoy, if I can get the microphone now. See the words up there? I think we need to stand for this. Yeah, yeah, you get plenty of room. Boys and girls, I wanted to share with you something I saw in the news this week and to the grown-ups as well. And maybe you saw this in your newspaper or on the television. Uh, But Shaw's going to put a picture up just now and it is a plant. Do you like plants? Do you like plants? Yeah, they're pretty, aren't they? Uh, Well, this is not a very nice kind of plant. Uh, This was in the news this week. This plant was being put somewhere. And can you see the person? Uh, Why do you think they're wearing gloves 
and wearing this special jacket and visor. What do you think is going on there? Yes. You're not meant to touch it. Do you see it there? Do not touch. It's a very dangerous plant. Yeah. It's called, can you read it there? It's called a gimpy gimpy. A gimpy gimpy plant. Very dangerous. And it's got little hairs on the leaves. And if you were to just brush against that, those little hairs would go under your skin. And it can be so dangerous. People who have done that say that it's like being electrocuted and set on fire at the same time. Very bad. So don't touch. And this lady here, she's putting it into this special glass case and it will be locked so that nobody can get it. And the reason I was particularly interested in that was because this plant is being put in a special garden that Mary and I just visited last month when we were on holiday. And we were down in a place in the northeast of England and um, uh, we went to visit this garden, the Poison Garden. Wow, that was an exciting place to go. And you're not allowed to just go in there on your own. You have to be taken by a special guide because that garden is full of plants that are poisonous, just like the gimpy gimpy. These plants can kill, it says, and we're not allowed to touch them. We're not allowed to go too close to them. And we all get shepherded around the poison garden and we'll look at these plants. And some of them are really quite pretty. Plants are nice, aren't they? They've got nice flowers on them. They can look pretty. They're very colourful. They smell nice. But don't touch. They're dangerous. They can hurt you. Some of them can even kill you. So they're very, very dangerous. And when I was thinking about that this week, it made me think of what the Bible calls sin. All the things that God warns us against doing. The things that are wrong. The things that displease God. And sometimes things that are wrong and things that God is not happy with, to us, they can look like these nice colourful flowers. They can look attractive. Uh, and and we, we're drawn to them. But they can be very dangerous. For the Pew Bibles, it's on page uh, 785. I call it Habakkuk, but you'll still know who it is. Hab Habakkuk, that's fine. Habakkuk. I'll Habakkuk. probably call it Habakkuk. <laughs> um, chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. The oracle that Habakkuk the prophet saw. Habakkuk's complaint. O oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help, and you will not hear? Or cry to you, violence, and you will not save? Why do you make me see iniquity? And why do you idly look at wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law is paralysed and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous. So justice goes forth perverted. Amen. Even when it's dark. But all of that is to come, so, so stay with me. But I do want us to notice just a, a couple of things in this opening passage that we can still take encouragement from this morning. And number one is, I think that there is a reassurance in knowing that people like Habakkuk have asked questions like this in the past. That faithful servants of God have also gone with prayers being unanswered. 
that even a prophet has scratched his head in confusion and wondered what on earth is going on. We don't feel so alone then, do we? And so I think the first thing is to notice that it's okay to ask these questions. And it's not only Habakkuk, of course. We only have to turn to the Psalms to find time and time again the psalmist asking the very same questions. Why? How long? Why do the wicked prosper? Or think of Job, the classic example of an innocent sufferer who asks God, Job chapter 30, I cry to you for help and you do not answer me. I stand And you only look at me. This is the real life experience of the men and women of God down through the ages. There is a a belief within some sections of the church, and I'm sure you have come across them, that the believer, exactly because they are a believer, should experience nothing but God's blessing on their lives. If there is something you need, why not just ask your Heavenly Father and He will provide whatever it is. It's become known as the the health and the wealth gospel, which is in fact a distortion of the gospel but it is this message that God wants you healthy God wants you wealthy and that if you're not then there is a problem with your faith that bad things shouldn't come into the Christian's life and we hear slogans name it and claim it Banded about in Christian circles as if God is just standing at the ready to meet our every desire. And I'm afraid those false ideas are very far removed from the experience of many of God's people. Sometimes, 